Number 60, integrated concepts. What energy is dissipated by a lightning bolt having a 20,000 amp current, a voltage of 1 times 10 to the 2 megavolts, and a length of 1 uh, millisecond? So it's asking about energy, and I know I'm given a current and I'm giving a voltage, right? So I have to think about how is energy related to current and voltage, and it's related via the formula power is equal to the current supplied multiplied by the voltage. Now remember, power is short for energy per time. I mean, that's what it is. Power is equal to the energy supplied divided by the time. It's, an, it's a rate of energy transfer or utilization, depending upon you know, how you want to view it. So I know now that um, I have my energy value right here. If I want to solve for energy, all I got to do is get the T on over, right? So I basically just cross multiply it. Right, this is in the denominator over here. I can cross multiply it essentially into the numerator because this is really over, over one. And voila, now I have my little formula here. Okay, so I know that I need these things in order to find the energy supplied, and uh, they gave it to me. Right now, we just got to make sure we got everything in the right units. So be careful when you plug it in. So the current here is 20,000 amps, so that's fine, that's the unit for current. The voltage here they gave it to us in megavolts. So what you're going to need to do is take the one times 10 to the second, and then, I'll put that in parentheses, multiply that then by 10 raised to the sixth, because we have to convert that into volts, and that's the conversion. Good, and then the time. Oh, they gave us one millisecond. We know we need seconds, because that's the unit of time here in physics. So it's one times then 10 to the minus three seconds. All right, so I did all those conversions just right there. And by this time in the class, that should be good meaning if you're still struggling with conversions you gotta go back and practice them and practice you gotta get quickly with them uh you gotta get quickly sure that's why i tutor science and not english but you have to go fast all right uh the reason being is because the problems will get harder and you don't want to spend as much time doing the conversions anyway enough of the lecture so 20,000 times 1 times 10 to the 2 multiplied then by 10 raised to the 6 and then take that and multiply it by 1 times 10 to the minus 3, or just 10 to the minus 3. And here we go. So we're going to get, uh, why did I plug, yeah, I didn't even need to plug that. So this is going to be, uh, whatever, 2 times then 10. This was really 1, 2, 3, 4. So this was really 10 to the 4th. So this would be 4, 6, 12, minus 3 should be 9. And that's then in joules, all right? And why don't I just check myself since it's early? Uh, three, six, looks like nine to me in the calculator. So we're good. All right. So, um, yeah, that's that's letter A. And let's take a look now at letter uh, B. So I'll move this over here. Letter A and letter B. So it says, what mass of tree sap could be raised from 18 degrees Celsius to its boiling point and then evaporated by this energy, assuming the sap has the same thermal characteristics as water. So this goes back to thermal, uh, chapter on thermal heat energy transfer. So you have to remember we're taking a, um, a certain mass, right? There's a certain, pretend there's a certain amount here of sap. It's starting at 18 degrees Celsius. It has the same characteristics as water. So what we got to do is take that sap and we're going to raise it to 100 degrees Celsius. And then we have to boil it, right? Or evaporate it, okay? So then it will, uh, uh, just as to, it doesn't even say that it's going, okay. So just, just to then evaporate it. So 100 degrees Celsius and then this is a vap, vaporization. Okay, so it's basically a, a two-part process. So I know now that the total amount of heat energy that's required to perform that process, and heat energy has the a unit of Q. Um, that makes sense, of course, right? Heat energy Q? No. So what I need to now do is I need to then take uh, the, um, I need to find now the uh, energy here for this raising of the temperature from 18 degrees Celsius to 100. So that's MC delta T. And then I have to add to that the energy that it would take to vaporize it, which is just M multiplied by the latent heat of vaporization for that particular sap. We can simply now, I, I want to pull out, I need to pull out a, um, a mass here, because that's really what we're solving for. So I'm going to pull out a common mass term between the two. All right. 
And uh, now what I realize is that in order to solve for m, because that's what they want, I have to divide this whole thing by this complicated little piece, but it's not hard. It's just gonna be Q over then C delta T plus the latent heat of vaporization. Now we can plug everything on in. We just need to know the units, okay? Just be careful. So the Q value here is the, ener the energy that's being supplied is the energy being supplied by the lightning. So that's the significance of what we just solved for. Ten to, uh, two times 10 to the ninth. Divide that now by the uh, specific heat of water here per kilogram. So this is 4,184. Careful if you're doing chemistry at the same time because you're going to be doing calculations in grams and the decimal goes there. Now multiplied by the change in temperature, right? So it's the final temperature here to get it to boil is 100 and then the initial is, uh, what do they say, 18, okay? Plus then the latent heat of vaporization of the water, that is a constant. Be careful with the units because the units that you'll find is going to be 22,560 kilojoules per kilogram. But we need this bad boy in joules, right? So we're going to simply multiply it by 1,000, and when you do that, it would be 2.256 times 10 to the 6th, okay? So that's the value I'm going to plug in here, 2.256 times 10 to the 6th. And then just go about our business in the calculator, right? So we're going to take that value, 2 times 10 to the 9, and divide it by, careful with your parentheses and stuff. So we're going to take 4184, multiply that now by the 100 minus then the 18, Close those parentheses. And then what we're going to do, hold on one second, I think I have one too many, yeah, I can get rid of that parenthesis. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add to that the 2.256 times 10 to the 6. Close it. And here we go. So 769, I guess if you round it, it'd be 770 sig figs. Yeah, who cares? And there it is. All right. There you go, guys. So hopefully that helps. It's going to be about that much. Um, it's going to have that mass. It's a lot. It's a lot. All right. Uh, yeah. Andrew out.